Hello YouTubers out there, this is Jerry Saturday at the Movies. So, um, I watched this video on Pauline Kael, who is the uh, late film critic who passed away uh, back in 2001. She used to write for The New Yorker, and for those of you who don't know, she was certainly an influential force, uh, not just in the world of film criticism, but in the world of film. Uh, many of her words certainly have been inspiring to many people. She made you feel, when you read her reviews, that you were sitting there with her watching a movie. Uh, that's one aspect, but the primary aspect being that she made you feel as if you were really seeing the movie, even though you may not have seen it yet. It's, uh, it was, so she had an incredible talent. Pauline Kael, in the video I'm referring to, is called Pauline Kael on the Auteur Theory and Martin Scorsese. And uh, she was at odds with the Auteur Theory. Essentially, Auteur, meaning the author of the work, was a term developed by Andrew Serres, and it came from the French initially. But basically what it meant was that a director who was often seen as somebody that just basically made a movie may have in fact also been the author of the work, that at its most personal, it came from the director and the writer and all the other collaborators, but essentially a director seeking to make certain kinds of movies that befit their own view of the world. That's where the auteur theory comes into place. Now, there are some directors who are just essentially there to make a movie. They don't know anything about this. They don't care about any of this. But then there are other directors who certainly have a certain significant view of the world. Martin Scorsese would be one, Stanley Kubrick. Um, Andrew Saris, who's not with us anymore, unfortunately, uh, also a, a film critic, made the point that even the directors of the past, uh, that is from the, let's say, the 30s, 40s, and 50s, people, people like Aldrich or... Um, Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Orson Welles. Uh, the list goes on. Uh, that they were, in fact, authors of the works because they had a personal view and their personality, or essentially what they thought personally about the world, was reflected in the work that they chose to make a movie about. Now, she feels that's all essentially hogwash because certain directors... If they think they're auteurs, they lose their way, and that's what she thinks that happened to Martin Scorsese. She championed Taxi Driver back in the day, and Mean Streets, and Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, and The Last Waltz, and she's one of the few, I think, that really uh, not just championed also Last Temptation of Christ, but uh, New York Stories, the episode called Life Lessons with Nick Nolte. Um, then after that, she just dismissed most of his work, including, including Goodfellas. But um, the thing about the auteur theory is it's not, it's merely that a director uh, is looking for themes that relate to who they are and the way they see the world. That's, exa that's exactly what the auteur theory, that's how you apply it. So... You can't expect Martin Scorsese to do anything other than making films about guilt, morality, immorality, um, and essentially that a very cynical view that basically life, people that populate it, uh, they are not always looking to justify what they do, and they're not always, not just that they're not very nice, but they're always being put to the test morally, and that they do things that they shouldn't be doing. And that's, you know, he deals with the dirt, you know, kind of like Goodfellas. Goodfellas, which was very well put by Gene Siskel back in the day when Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert declared Goodfellas the best film of 1990. And it was the night after the Oscars, uh, and they were guests on our senior hall show. And Dance of the Wolves won the best film of 1990. And they felt that, Gene Siskel felt, that the film was about gangsters who were really what they had been portrayed before. That they were scum. And that's what 
Martin Scorsese makes films about people who are scummy, who do things that, uh, not, I mean, not all of them, but essentially the ugly side of life. That's what he's interested in, the mean streets. That's where his heart lies. So, of course, he's going to look for stories that relate to that. And sometimes he'll do films that deviate from that vision. Uh, the Aviator, for example. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of Shutter Island. Uh, Cape Fear. But that's not to say that he doesn't still deal with guilt and morality. And immorality, and in some cases, even with casino, amorality. So the themes are there, and for better or worse, he does them better than anybody could because he has a very personal way of looking at things, and his filmmaking and his editing relate to the interior aspects of the characters so that when Henry Hill becomes paranoid, we feel his paranoia in Goodfellas, in Bringing Out the Dead, when Frank Pierce, played by Nicolas Cage, is can't save a life he's a ambulance paramedic and he's not able to save a life and he's losing his sanity but he also feels enormous guilt for the one life that he wished he could have saved and he's haunted by that memory that's classic scorsese it's exactly what you expect him to do but he really deals with the way his characters feel and that's his talent is the way that you feel so when you're watching one of his films, you're feeling what the character feels, the protagonist, the main character. And the mood and the rhythm may be at odds with the way most mainstream movies are made. So let me be one of the few to make this very clear. Pauline Kael was wrong about Scorsese. She might be right about other auteurs, but she was wrong about this man. And those are my two cents on it. And this is Jerry Saturday at the Movies, signing off.